yeah, so Jeremy and Jennifer are out. Um, if that, not, of course, I've had all this time and I don't have my stuff pulled up. Um, but we will review the minutes. We'll review, I'm sorry, it's still loading. Here we go. A couple of different documents that got thrown around. Um, the equity project matrix that Jeremy sent. Um, talk about the Vermont League of Cities and Towns equity plan. Um, and the um, equity plan update report that, Jer that Cameron just sent out yesterday that I have not looked at yet. And stipend outreach check-in. But I think that'll, that'll be the full amount of time, I think. How does that sound for what we prioritize? Cool. All right. Do you folks want to pull up the minutes from the last meeting, which are in the calendar invite? I never sent out an email. Apologies. Do we want to make a motion? I motion to approve the minutes. I can second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, I look like Michael's still reading. Yes. Oh, oh so. good. Great. Cool. Any opposed? <laughs> no. Awesome. I thought I, I thought I'm, I, I'm mumbling. Sorry. No. I, yeah. I, yeah. I was like, I see that reading face. Here we go. <laughs> um. Okay. And then should we look at um the equity project matrix? Could you send a, another link to that? Mm -hmm. I was not able to, I, I struggle with Google Docs and I wasn't able to even get on this time. <laughs> For some reason, it just wouldn't believe me. So that the one that I put in the chat, that's the Google Doc link that's not working? Uh, well, it didn't last night when okay. I when I was, I, I'm trying, I'll try again. Yeah, and then I will- There it is. Okay, good. There it did work? Okay. Yes. All right. I meant to edit and stuff is goofy, but um, so I know we don't have Jeremy to talk us through on this, but um, I get, I think our goals here are to make sure we're tracking all the different pieces and kind of where they've come from and the status. Um, I'm just going to add a note one there too. And then, do we know what lead partner is? I was just going to ask that. Is it like the city committee or outside stakeholders? Yeah, I was thinking when we had been talking about like there's like housing thing. So would that be like the new housing committee would be the lead and we might just support them or whatever? Or like the only example that springs to mind. Yeah. Hey Carol. Hi, Carol. We're going through our prioritization tool, which I just dropped in the chat again. Um, 
and we'll spend a few, yeah, we'll spend a few more minutes kind of just looking this over, adding in comments and status and yeah, see if what questions look past or okay, yeah, so or comment, whatever. Okay, so thanks. Um, I'll open it. Go ahead, Paula. Uh, are there any differences after the Neve um, police chief came? Because the report was before he uh, was appointed, right? So is there anything, because I can see very detailed things we wrote here, should we, you know, renew them or they are all same still? So um, I can count to that. Um, he has done quite a bit of this. A lot of this came out of like the community feedback. Um, he has seen this and has read this and he's done quite a bit of this. I, so I'm not, some of these, yes, some of them, no. That's what I'll say. Uh, maybe we can just put a note or I don't know, uh, something like that. You know, it has been, you know, improved or this is done to succeed this, something like that. I can, um, I didn't I go in think. and look at that, but I will write, I will take a stab at writing sort of what the police have done lately um, to address a lot of these things, if that's okay. I don't, I don't think I could probably bang that out for all of these right now. And I, it's not, we're not supposed to go in and edit this together, like outside of this. So what I'll do is I'll just sort of look at this and sort of write it up with Chief Pete and just sort of send that to y'all as like an update. Yeah, it doesn't have to be very soon. <laughs> I don't want to create more work for you, Cameron. Well, it's just one, like, yeah, I, I think if things are done, it shows that our committee and police, um, you know, department succeeds something. So it's, it's a good thing to show that something is done. Mm -hmm. That's my point. Well, one way to do this without extra labor is um, the chief has been very good about reporting these at city council. Is that, you know, is, so would everything be in that, in those reports? Because all you could then say, you know, it's just so see uh, minutes of the council, whatever date or, or whatever time, so that you don't have to spend a lot of time filling out forms. <laughs> I will say that. I appreciate that, but I, I also think that these are such like big community issues that they deserve like a, a written answer. The minutes are never like, this is what was, the, it was like council discussed policing issues and like that's the entirety of the minutes. So like, that's not that helpful for anybody. So I, I don't like, I, I, I'm i sorry, I'm just sort of like rambling at this point, but I did that report and I, that I sent to y'all and I didn't include any of the policing stuff because a lot of that was PRC related. That was work that creative discourse was doing for the PRC. And so I didn't include that in your, like in the equity update. Um, mm -hmm. Now, if you would like me to, I will. And so that's like, that was a decision point that I wanted to talk about. Um, so we could do a, a separate report on like how we are doing when addressing some of these things. Cause like, you know, the defund, decrease, or disarm the police is not, that's like not something that staff has done anything towards, right? So, so can things. we just add another column, like update column, and just write like couple couple things? Mm -hmm. You know, we are working it. These are the things already done. You know, something like that. Just add this one, not create like a long report I okay. know sometimes it is hard to read, right? But when we look at this as a comedy, right? Okay, yes, good. You know, there is something going on, you know, very, very short, very brief, just to inform us. So we can talk about when people ask, right? Oh, what have you done? You know, good. You got all this recommendations, anything, anything is done. Then we can say, yeah, actually, you know, this unit did this, this unit did that. So something like that. So I apologize for not having been at these meetings for a long while um, and I'm kind of just getting caught up, but I just want to ask the question, 
So is this, um, this list is serving kind of as your, your strategic plan for this group. So if that's the case, then I, I, I agree with, um, with that comment that it, because I used to have a, other work, I did a strategic plan and there was a column for progress. And so that was like the quickest, easiest way to be able to share what, what was happening. So I, that seems like a, a, you know, an easy way to do it. And then, you know, if you want to do a more formalized report, you can do that, but that, I, I would agree with that. So thank you for just sharing that, that this is like the strategic plan and, you know, how you're going forward. Well, I think, is this our strategic plan or is this our, um, like, I think this is more of just like for us to keep track of all of our, yeah, I guess I'm not sure what the difference is now that I've started talking it out loud, but like, um, I think it, it feels like that, right? It's like very yeah, easy to turn right, yeah. into that. What is a strategic plan if not keeping track of all the things that you're working on? So yeah, cool. Sorry. <laughs> Just to comment on that, the only thing that I think would be missing is like, what's your, what's the objective for each of the items on your, you know, of your issues here. So, but, okay, I'll be quiet now. Just one thought on the, um, no, that's all great, Carol. Great to see you here. Yeah. Um, but just the policing stuff, like I feel like it's particularly messy just because there's like the whole set of PRC police review committee recommendations and this, and many of the, like the PRC was looking at the equity assessment as we were making recommendations that are were like more specific. So I could see for example, you could say like, some of which are like PRC recommendations or things where there was PRC conversation recommendations, kind of like spirit of what we were talking about and the department's done things like be more approachable. We now have a community resource officer on staff. Like it would be nice to like, I think we could like lay out maybe the policing one because it's it's unique. I'm like, how do we just like make it easy and efficient to kind of cross-reference like what's been done that get at the kind of goal of a lot of these. And I agree that not everyone's been acted on, but a lot of them, there's been something that's been going on um, tied to like, you know, updated policies and protocols or different staffing of more, you know, like crisis intervention team work. And like, so there's been a ton going on there that I, and it doesn't all like sync up exactly with these categories. So I don't know if there's an efficient way to reflect all that or just like reference, like go look at the <laughs> PR, the police report for more details of what's been going on there or something. Not very coherent, sorry. Not enough coffee yet today. <laughs> so my point is somehow as a committee, we need to know if we did something or we help someone or some unit to do something. That's all I think we need to know in that column or whatever. It doesn't have to be very specific. Uh, but why did why did we do this um, survey, right? To help some uh, create some improvement. If there's no improvement, then the survey is meaningless. If there is, which there are, so it shows that our job or our project was successful. And it is good for us to know this for future uh, plans and future um, work. So do we want to like add a, a column of like objectives and uh, we have like the notes progress column. Yeah, I'm just like, what are our next steps here? Cameron's going to go through the policing pieces. Um, do, the, do one of us want to go through and do another update of 
the other pieces that Jeremy put in of kind of based on Cameron's updates and where we're at. Does yeah, just trying to figure out what our next steps are here. I like the Carol's idea of progress. Yeah, so I added that as column G was notes in progress. Um, and I think I haven't like pa I haven't dug through Cameron's report back, but I'm I think that will also be really I'm gonna try to like pull both up and just kind of do it as we talk about. Is it okay if we move on to that? As a yeah, okay. Thank you so much for all of this work, Cameron. I'm sorry I have not. I mean, yeah, it got five pages. Nice That's why really I have late. It over. So, yeah. Oops. I'm glad I had time yesterday. I'm sorry that it was um, late, but we can go over it. Hold on. So, um, Carol, I I don't have any way to get. Let me just forward this to you right now, so you can have it. What are you sending? Uh, I wrote an equity assessment recommendation progress update. Woo. So um, uh, basically what I did was split up the equity assessment as given to us by creative discourse. And I hope that I have sort of written it in a way where I'm not saying we're done with anything, but just giving like an update on where we're, where we're at. But I split it and I formatted it between the creative discourse group recommendations based on equity and inclusion and then the community ones. And like I said, I did take out um, the policing related ones. Um, but I am obviously whatever y'all want me to do. I will put them back in if you want me to. No worries. Um, I was to be honest, when I was like sitting down and like going through the things that y'all have done and that staff has done, I was really pleased with how far yeah. and what, what we've managed to accomplish. Um, uh, something that was very clear to me is that the staff hasn't prioritized the uh, limited English profic proficiency recommendations. or well, we've done some things and we have a language line available. We haven't like gotten our signs changed or you know papers translated or forms translated we haven't done any of that and so it, this was also a really great check-in for like th things we could be focusing on as staff a little harder so uh yep should we like go through go through them one like um of like, or I guess of. We can go through each one. Um, so I was also, this council is sort of asked for a update eventually, right? Right, right, right. Okay. So this would be a way to to frame that conversation, I think. So, okay, so have, getting an up, using this as a way to give an update for city council and maybe all, like, can we, as we go through them also, like what is CJAC's next step here? and. Hmm. If there's, um, you know, pro place, things to things to capture for on our prioritization um, stuff too. Is that is that an okay way to spend this time? Yes. Shayna, could you please share your screen so we can see the report? Uh, I I have it on my computer, but it will be better, I think, uh, to see. Thank you. Is that? Yeah. Is is there a plan to to get this back out to the people who participated? Like, I think it'd be great to share with participants. Like, we really are working. <laughs> you all took time to provide input, and we're cranking on it. Lots of work to do, but mm -hmm. creative discourse have some of those email lists. They still yeah, they said they would do those for us. I mean, maybe when it's ready for council or whatever, that could be a good time to. You're muted, Michael. 
Um, can we put this up on our web page and um, as as a document that that and make it available that way, and then sort of get the word out that you know it, there it is, um, and anyone can look at it. Once y'all feel like it's done, um, then it's done to me, and I will put it wherever you want <laughs> would like, and that's yeah, I can put it up there. No worries. Well, it's going to be a work in progress all the time, right? So, I mean, I think if 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 we're satisfied with with what you have already put it up here, we can we, we can put it up and then change it as 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 changes take place. You can you can put in the revised version. That makes sense. And just you know, do things like put it on a front porch forum that uh, here's the here's our ongoing work report. And if you're interested, take a look. And then do we have a date for when we're presenting this to city council or that we're working backwards from? Uh, let me, I, I, I literally just had the list of um, upcoming Sorry. things. No, it's okay. It's funny. Um, I'm obviously at home, so I only have one screen and I hate it. Uh, That's all I could manage. <laughs> we have it tentatively for July 20th. Tentatively okay. July 20th. Okay. That's a great, that's great timing actually, if that works. So, oh, I can't make that date. Come on. Anyway, okay. Do you want us to move it? No, no I think we can. Um, I'm here and I'm just copying and pasting things. Here, let me, <laughs> sorry, I'm like doing all of this like behind, not behind the scenes, but just let me like share my chaos here. There of like adding in the progress update. Cause you guys can see my full screen now, right? Yes. Um, what else should we be updating or, and I tried to put these both in Google docs so that if people wanted to, we can do updates together um now um if that's helpful working meetings okay great so like what's the what, where what's the next step with the let stuff like there's a lot of you know good stuff to report back here but that um like yeah is there um more work is needed on this recommendation um like city guides is there anything for um for cjack to be working on Yeah. Good. Nice. You are multitasking like a pro. So the website update, that's a very exciting um, and very current uh, update. Um, just so y'all know, we have literally just launched this week um, the overhaul of our website. So we are working diligently on updating our content. That's the first thing that they want us to update. So um, we're currently, each department is going through with a fine tooth comb, all of their website pages. And, you know, it sounds like everything should be updated and 99.9% .9 of the time it is on the website, just making sure um, that nothing was overlooked. And then we're gonna start uh, working on condensing our uh, site map and that's the biggest next step because um, as I feel like anyone who has interacted with our website knows, um, sometimes it takes a little longer than three clicks to get to something and we'd really like to reduce that. So that is our current 
work. Very excited. Three clicks. I don't know. That was like an industry standard. That makes so much sense. I like that a lot. I'm going to bring that to other parts of my life. Yeah, I didn't know that either. They were like, yeah, you guys are a little bull, a little above that. <laughs> Thanks. Um, staff council introduction interactions. Yeah, I don't know. Cameron talking about the rules of conduct. I I know this is a live thing happening <laughs> these days, and so of um, if there is. Yeah, it's like setting clear expectations and interactions. Like, I don't, yeah, there's more here. I honestly, do y'all remember really what they were trying to get at? Um, one of the recommendations that came out and I was reading more and I hadn't gone back and watched the presentation, but the thing that they talked about was like council acknowledging when they had received feedback. Now that I can't do anything about. So um, do y'all remember what else? that was sort of getting at that's a hundred percent of what i'm remembering is that it was like you know people send emails and don't get any response and so just like getting like even if it's just like a we've received this you know we've gotten this and we'll be looking at it later or something like that i'm not i remember seeing that here but now i'm not seeing it so let me know if, no. that could be the kind of thing when we do the presentation to council of like yeah. and that's like a reminder i mean it's also like almost always you're getting an email that goes to maybe like 10 people and so for all of us to always respond to everyone like i think a lot gets lost because everyone's assuming somebody else is responding mm -hmm. like and we don't reply all because then it's like a de facto meeting so i maybe it's also like there's some better protocols of like Maybe it is good if every single person's like, thank you for the, you know, thank you for the message, like received, I'll be looking into this or something. Or, you know, if you're the, often you don't even know like whose district they are, like they'll just send it to the full council, plus the mayor, plus Bill and often Cameron or, you know, whatever. So I think there, I think I get the frustration because I know I don't reply to a lot when it's like that kind of thing. And I don't, I assume somebody's helping them, which isn't necessarily the case. There it is. Found it. You know, something I uh, maybe that I could add there would be useful is we have overhauled our um, public records request policy. That might also need to be go in there. Mm -hmm. um, something we've done that has helped enormously is in, is ask people to write into one email address for public records requests, and so that one email address goes to a bunch of people. And so it's guaranteed to be seen and responded to instead of just like languishing in one employee's inbox. And that has been great. So I'm, I might, I might add that if that sounds good. Well, Obviously sharing my ignorance here because I've never done the public records request for the city of Montpelier, but it's not like a form that you fill out or something like that, or? Not really, no. Um, the police yeah. department had a form, no one used it. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so this is a lot easier. People can, st the thing about public records requests is legally they can come in anyway. You guys could do one right now. You just tell me I want X and I would need you to do it. X, right? Yeah. But um, it's a lot easier when they're written down and can be responded to in that way. Cool. Um, accessibility, elevator, hey. Anything more there? Um, okay, we transition on, sorry. To, I'm like, oh, it's 8.30 already. Okay. There's the other thing that I could think of being like a, a big project that we want to like maybe include there. I didn't know, I really wanted to get some feedback on what you wanted to see included there. Um, I referenced the ADA committee because they're sort of um, arbiter of, you know, disability yeah. access. But we also have a couple of upcoming projects like the 203 Country Club Road Elks Club project that that will need consideration or uh, we're redoing the bathrooms in the pool house in the fall so that they are accessible to all, you know, like we're, we're trying. And so maybe I could also include those.
with like the uh, and uh, everything new that's all being yeah obviously because okay sorry Two. all right anything on this first section of recommendations i had a question that i wrote in on my uh, on my copy last night but i can't seem to retrieve it tonight it's about the language stuff um and I wish I could either either remember it or or, or access it. Let me. Um, we can circle back to. Sorry. Well, it was on my copy, so I didn't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, I can't help. That's the problem, and I. I It's a full screen. Maybe I can find it this way. There it is. Um, so my question was, um, for the language, will this include trans translations of documents for committee members who do not have English as, uh, oh yeah, that's for, for new, for, for committee, you know, city committees. If we're trying to recruit people um, um, who who are who are you know on on mar on the margin? One is is going to be language. So would would there be um, someone who's who's prepared to start dealing with all the forms that get passed back and forth within a single committee? I'm going to be real with you, Michael. I don't think we could afford that as a city. Yeah. I don't either, um, and I'm just wondering if this is something that you know is going to, we're going to be tagged for. Hmm. Uh, what are we going to do? Uh, the other question that that raised is, um, when people are appointed to city committees, do they have to be citizens? No, that's not in any. No, no, oh, okay. people don't even have to be residents of Montpelier. Well, I, I knew about I knew about that. But I was just wondering if if it's it's one of these things about like voting. Um, I think we have s some committees are are more strict than others. The ones that are legally required have some uh, requirements, but I can't speak intelligently about what those are. So maybe that is a good to do item for me to determine uh, what our requirements are for all of our committees and let you guys know at a future meeting because I, I don't want to say something that's not true. I, I can give my example. When I apply this committee, I wasn't a citizen. I had my green card, so it wasn't a problem. I just got my citizenship made to need. So now I am a citizen, but when I started, I wasn't. So mm -hmm. I don't think there's any specific um, obstacle for people who are not citizens. So if I could just go back um, just to address the the idea of um, you know the documents and accommodating somebody who um, needed that if they were serving on a committee, it's not an ideal situation, but could be mentioned is that you know there would be an, at least an attempt to rely on volunteers who could do that. So even if you couldn't pay a translator, if it was possible to like do the work to find somebody who'd be willing to volunteer their time to do that might be the best interim option. There is like a Pashto like translator in Montpelier, right? Like there's, that's like, that's no. Not or, really, no, but I did oh. find one, which I'm very pleased about. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, we, the things, one of the things we are working on right now is, um, that city guide and, you know, finishing that and then getting that to the person to translate it into Pashto and then paying them to do that. Um, uh, you know, I think there's also a very interesting thing about translation services and, and being, um, this is something we've talked a lot about as staff is, is like being culturally aware as well. Like we're, we want to throw like a welcome party, but will that even be useful yeah. to the, to folks uh, we need to make sure it's culturally sensitive. And that is something I don't know if staff feels like 100% prepared for. So just working with that as well and trying to make sure that like we're, we're being respectful for on all on all sides of things. So, but I did find one. <laughs> That's the point of the story. 
Uh, how about um, asking help of high school students for our committees? It will be good experience for them. We can pay, you know, little or they can be their volunteer job because since you talk to school districts about the languages, which means that they have students who is, you know, their first language is those ones. Just, you know, another alternative if you want to go that way. Are you, are you thinking particularly asking the students for like for trans like translation stuff? Yeah, like they can they help. can help. Yeah, I feel like there's like a I don't know like stereotype that I have in my head of like kids help you know doing the interpretation of the parents, but like I really want to be careful of um, not not relying on that and like relying on adults for translation, especially like for stuff around family stuff. Um, so I, that's like my knee jerk reaction. I don't know where that's coming from or why, but <laughs> just to put it out there. Yeah, I didn't understand yeah. your point, Shana. So, of like, um, of just like wanting to not rely on like students to do the translation, like what's ultimately going to be for their for their parents, and of you know if we're going to get volunteers of having them be like adult volunteers, um. Does that like a concerns around um oh no I wasn't saying that oh. they should if the parent is a committee member then we should reach out their kids I was talking about like a general mm -hmm. oh we need some you know young person I'm just making this okay, up okay. who None. speaks this they are not yeah. you know combining them with their parents just creating cool. an opportunity to them you know, to hear that, oh, my language is, you know, being spoken, right? And I can help, something like that. I, I got it now. No, not for their parents. It's just a, like a general, um, general help from them. Yeah. yeah. Okay, if I move us along, I'm feeling a little like, ah, <laughs> we moved you to the smaller, and yet here we are. Um, Equity recommendations and community updates on um, accommodations in meetings, no changes in meetings, having remote options, website redesign, re redesign we've already talked about, um, anti-racism trainings for staff, keeping hybrid options. Is that anything to say on those ones? Mm, no, uh, I will say that um, the all staff sensitivity training was sort of like the a general sensitivity training and that it was not a specific anti-racism. It definitely talked about it quite a bit, um, but um, uh, that one took a priority over the pilot sort of training right now um, for rolling it out to all staff. So we'll we're still working on figuring out what next step is to right sizing and getting more people to take the whiteness at work training. So just an update. Right. Um, all right, relational, improved communications and outreach targeting underserved populations and acknowledging receipt of communications we've already talked about. Um, what is, yeah, can network is that there's like a signed contract? I don't really think I know about this. Is if there's more to be said here, I will add their website to that so that yeah. uh, add the I'm writing that down can network website. Um, can is run through Sustainable Montpelier right. Coalition, and we it came about as far as I understand it after the um. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I know it's a big hurricane for y'all. Isabel is a oh. <laughs> Irene. <laughs> Irene. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so Irene came by, and out of the Irene, people wanted to help their neighbors and have a way to like give back to their communities. So this was started, and our police department really tried to get this off the ground, but um, can kind of returned in the face of COVID. And so um, Sustainable Montpelier sort of took over 
the the running of it. And what it is is basically just neighborhood based. It's basically like a neighborhood watch group that's basically just created to um, sort of interact with government. And um, I'm making it sound very uncool, but it is cool. <laughs> I promise. It is very cool. But I guess what's the what's the signed contract for getting information out there? Is that like the the like um the the bifolds that are kind of yeah so the city signed a contract with can specifically for communications so we can like we for instance really great um uh example we have a water leak on a couple of streets today and in in addition to flyering and trying to contact folks what we can do is reach out to those neighborhood can coordinators and they will tell their neighbors, right? So you're getting information from somebody that you trust and and res- like have a relationship with and can feel more comfortable asking questions and engaging with it. So we th- we really believe and have seen that this will reach a whole hell of a lot more people than just like sending out emails or putting it on our website. Um, so each neighborhood has like a specific uh, neighborhood coordinator that that helps us communicate with each neighborhood. So can get very localized, very um, specific to each community and what they want to know about. So. Uh, Oh, sorry. I can keep keep talking about them, but the exciting thing is that our contract with them also says that we want them to hold like physical events for communities as well. Um, so they've already held like a uh, office hours for some council members so that they could meet with some neighborhoods that maybe like don't have a lot of representation at council for whatever reason to like meet and talk to their council members. So, um, uh, they're going to be doing big things. From my understanding though, too, there isn't one, like not every, there is the whole city is not covered with these so there's a bit of a gap in terms of um who's served by the the cans that is true yeah and is that part of their agreement is that they work on on developing new ones in the other neighborhoods yeah yes definitely it is um i will say that some of the neighborhoods that have been traditionally kind of hard for us to integrate with like barry street um are are doing great and can really works for that community so it's exciting housing okay if we move on um addressing addressing homelessness no big deal (laughs) um it's been using most of it you want thousand dollars a ton of these you know different pieces um, a homelessness task force has a budget for next year and has funding for um, lockers and restrooms. Um, I, this is like a really big one, but I guess like maybe my question is like, what is CJAC's next step here? If there is, it's just kind of continuing to support and the process stay in communication. that sounds fair from my perspective this is always like in progress like you know like here we go well like completed checkbox no yeah anyway that would be really cool yeah (laughs) um policies Uh, I included your budget assessment tool, equity assessment tool. I don't, do you have any other policies that I forgot about? I think we were all on, you know, pre-COVID when the city council was kind of going through all of the different policies and evaluating them. 
um, with fresh eyes. And I think just like trying, like with the intention of bringing equity into that process and then obviously other priorities took precedent. Um, but that, yeah, is there anything else around policies? So I can think of, like it's come up a few times of just like CJAC being a resource, like when the home equi home energy ordinance was being developed and there were questions of equity and we used the assessment tool. And so I think and that was one example. I feel like there might've been another time or two, but yeah, that one jumps to me. I can add that as well. That makes sense. Like saying you're a, a, a resource to go to for policy review for council. I thought that was its own line in the in the spreadsheet, but I'm not seeing it. So if, if someone else sees it, go ahead. Okay. Hiring staff. Looks cool. <laughs> I was very excited. I was doing some data analysis yeah. last night. I didn't. So here's the thing. I didn't include the like numbers in this. I was looking at it. And the, the thing that's like, I, I put a whole disclaimer in here, but what was upsetting to me is that I've never done a demographic survey of staff. Right. So the, the way I was allotting demographics was based purely on assumptions. Right. right. And so um, I didn't include the numbers. Uh, if you want them, I will include them. Um, I, I, to me, because we're such a small staff, when I say like there's two people who identify as non-binary, I feel, I don't know. It just, it squeaked yeah. me out. It freaked me out. I just took it out. So <laughs> I just took it out. But I was really pleased with this data. Um, uh, it's funny, it's not funny, but like, the when you see like a percent increase from like when i say other in the um like race demographic increased 100 percent, we went from zero to one which is like very exciting but that's like 100 percent is one of those like things that feels kind of squeaky too like am i lying by statistics no it did increase 100 percent, but you know it's one person so um, more work to be done. Um, I also looked at our like leadership team demographics and um, we're going to be talking about that internally and what that looks like. Um, but that was exciting. That was exciting data to share. Awesome. We did it, you guys. <laughs> okay, so I think so. This is so exciting. So just looking this over really quick, um, it looks like the one thing that's not explicitly named in here is just this public sentiment survey of continuing to learn what people need. Um, I think we there are places that's built in, so I can just do that quick update. And then the policing things, which um, Cameron will get the report back on um, from Chief Pete. Um, and so... Can I just sort of get a gut check from y'all? Are you comfortable with me not including the policing recommendations in this report? Mm. So can we state something that we are not including because it's in the report that we got from creative discourse. So people might think that why yeah, it's goofy. We don't we don't mention, right? Are we, you know, hiding something? Uh, because if they can read the report, actual one, they will see that that item too. So why we don't? Um, what's your reason, Cameron? I understand. Oh, oh, oh. But, okay. Yeah. yeah I was like, <laughs> yeah, okay, for, for the public, not for yeah. me or for us. <laughs> okay. I and I can also link to like the PRC pages and like some right. of the. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, great. So yeah, we don't hide anything. If you want to read and learn, go there. But this is mostly for, uh, you know, say Jack um, uh, focus, right? Mm. Okay, so I'm hearing that we should include an acknowledgement and sort of disclaimer as to why it's not 
in there and then link it, link people to learn more about what we're doing in policing. Great. In two minutes, can we just talk about stipend outreach real quick? Um, so I will, I dropped the ball. I lost my notebook that has my to-do list in it. And I don't know how, because I don't go anywhere or do anything. Um, but I just never did this because I lost my to-do list. So I'm going to do my outreach that I've committed to doing. Um, but then also I'm wondering if folks could claim a date right now to post on front porch forum about, um, the about the stipends coming out um, and then if there's any update on the like press release and story and social media outreach things like that and knowing we're out of time so meaning I've got another meeting I gotta hop to but um maybe let's I'll yeah, Shana sorry before you go I will attend that meeting tomorrow thank you Michael for yeah. your reply because I wasn't I didn't understand what's going on so do you want anything uh, me to do? Just sit there and observe and take notes or? I think, you know? I think to, like from CDAC, I think just, yeah, we were asked specifically as CDAC to participate in that. And um, I was just like, oh, I can, I'm interested in this. I can make it, I'm, I can go. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, I definitely cannot go. Um, and so I think I don't know more than what's in that email. And so, um, but it seemed, it seems like something that would be worthwhile for, us to go to the Montpelier Police Program at North Branch. Okay, so I will attend and listen them and just take notes. You know, That's all your expectations. And, for yeah, okay. and like report back at the next meeting, but no okay. email or anything needed, I think. That sounds good. Oops, sorry, I'm still sharing. Didn't realize I was doing that. Okay, thank you all so much, Cameron. Thank you so much for this report. Good to see you, Carol. Bye, yeah. all. Have a good one. Thank you.